My guest today is the one and only Kaleem Shabazz here serving in his capacity as president of the Atlantic City branch of the Atlantic City of the uh, NAACP or should I say NAACP Atlantic City branch. And <laughs> okay. I, I want to make sure that I, I get this right. Uh, so thankful that you took taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. Uh, I want to ask you how you got started in the NAACP, but I know your time is short. So let's get to the brass tacks of why we asked you to come here. Mm -hmm. One thing that I thought was uh, very provocative and interesting when I attended the last meeting mm -hmm. of the NAACP was the fact that you said uh, the Atlantic City chapter is underway in a program or um, a process to increase voter turnout within the city of Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. Generally, you could run a ham sandwich against a Republican, mm -hmm. <laughs> although I know you don't endorse parties, don't endorse parties. In, in, in Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. So why do you feel, or why does the NAACP Atlantic City feel the need to increase uh, voter turnout and by as much as 10%. That's a big number. That is a big number. Um, and, and, and it's a challenge, but I, I, I'm hopeful that we can reach it. There's a lot of reasons we want to increase voter turnout. As you, you absolutely said correctly, the NACP does not endorse candidates, but we encourage people to be involved civically and engaged civically, and we encourage people to register to vote. And more than that, uh, not just registering to vote, registering to vote and actually voting for whoever uh, they th believe is their best choice, who represents their values, uh, who uh, uh, is going to uh, progress their priorities and, and support uh, what they think is the best thing for their community. Ten uh, percent uh, because as we look at the statistics and number of people voting, uh, we believe it's too low. I would like to see, and, and the executive committee agrees with me, a 100% voter participation. Not for any particular party or candidate, but for the process of voting in America. And I know it's popular in some uh, circles uh, to decry uh, American democracy. And I don't believe it's 100% uh, uh, effective and 100% perfect, but I will say this. Uh, that the American system of government, as we stand today in 2024, September 24th, is far superior to any other system in terms of having people have the right to participate, have the right to run for office, have the right to uh, speak to the elected officials, have the right to participate in debate, have the right to form a, a ticket or, or even a party uh, to participate in the system. So our belief is that more people need to register, more people need to vote. And in uh, such an important election as our presidential election, which obviously only comes uh, once every four years, uh, many people only vote in the presidential election, which is their right, but we are encouraging people to vote in every election. This election is such a stark contrast, we believe, uh, in the fact that you have one person who's running uh, it's never been done in history. It's a convicted felon. Uh, one person who's running is uh, convicted of sexual assault, uh, business fraud. And then you have another person who's running as a major party candidate who is a career prosecutor, uh, president, vice president of the United States, a U.S. senator, a district attorney, and an attorney general. I would say it's a pretty uh, stark difference. That's up to people to make uh, their decision. Uh, so that's why we are saying 10 percent, and we're doing a lot of activities. I just went to an event. Let me give a shout out to Elder Lee. Elder Lee is the head of the Hebrew uh, congregation in Atlantic City, uh, and they had their day of service. Uh, and I want to give a shout out also to Judah Darrington, who's one of our executive committee members in NACP, who helped organize this along with other uh, members of her congregation. Uh, and uh, they had it in Browns Park, and we registered several people. Uh, to vote uh, there. I participated uh, and I was very happy to have that activity. Uh, we also engaged in voter registration across the city of Atlantic City, uh, uh, Brother Tyler, to help increase that number. Uh, we also have started to distribute yard signs. 
And the yard signs say, Atlantic City NACP chapter says vote November 5th. We're not going back. Uh, obviously, we're not endorsing a candidate. We're not endorsing a team. But we are encouraging people to vote. We're distributing them all over the city of Atlantic City uh, to give visibility to our push to have people uh, register to vote. And I'm happy to report that we're getting a very good response of people wanting yard signs and uh, people uh, participating uh, in that way. Uh, so we're doing everything that we can to increase the vote. We also later, uh, as we get closer, we're going to have a postcard drive. What is that? We're going to have members send postcards to their friends and their neighbors asking them to vote on November 5th or if they vote by mail. The mail or ballots, I can report, have been received. Uh, my family and I, we have been voting by mail uh, since the uh, COVID. Okay. And that's, I find it's easier. My family finds it easier. No, normally on election day, I'm busy. I'm running around. Uh, so if I vote, by mail, get it out the way, it's done. So we're going to, we are encouraging people, if they get a mail-in ballot, to vote by mail. Uh, if they don't vote by mail, they'd rather vote at the, uh, uh, by machine. We're encouraging the early vote. Why? Because early vote, the lines are less. There's new machines, so if you're uh, going to have an issue with the machine, go early vote and you can get help. You can get help election day, too, but it's going to be busier election day. Another thing that we're doing, uh, October 1st, which is next Tuesday, uh, we're going to have a, a session in the Lang City Council Chambers. I'm doing that. Let me put on my uh, Kaleem Shabazz council person hat. Uh, I'm doing that in a nonpartisan way in conjunction with the Atlantic County uh, Office of Registration, Board oh, of Elections, okay. the uh, Office of Commissioners. Okay. Commissioner of Registration and the Superintendent Board of Elections. Uh, Maureen Bogdan, who did an excellent job, as you know. You have to help me get her here. <laughs> I will. Yeah, yeah, she's, her or Autumn, who's an outreach director, they're doing a tremendous job. In fact, they told me uh, that they have so many requests that they can't fill them all for okay. people who want to get on the new machine. So that's why we're doing this uh, October so, 1st. So I may, have to get, I may have to put it now for 2028. <laughs> what you might have to do, come to City City Council, Hall, City, City, Hall Council. City Council Chambers, October 1st, uh, between uh, 3.30 and 8, and she should be there. She meaning Maureen, Commissioner, Commissioner uh, Bogdan, and you can get an interview. There you go. Right. If you just, I don't want to slow, I don't want to derail your train, but if you're just tuning in, you're listening to The Light right here on the Mighty 91.7 WLFR Pomona. We're coming to you live from the campus of Stockton University, and we're discussing the push to increase Atlantic City's voter turnout by 10% in the upcoming uh, election. Where do you see the opportunities for uh, new unregistered voters? That's a good question. Uh, young people, uh, say under the age of 30, uh, older people who have uh, dropped out in terms of being uh, dissatisfied uh, with elections, um, Really, senior citizens have the highest voting percentage. Right. When I say senior citizens, I'm talking like 60 and older. Right. They vote regardless. If it rains, they vote. Uh, if it snows in November, they vote. If it's cold, they vote. Uh, so our efforts are more focused on people uh, who are younger um, and also uh, people who maybe have English as a second language. Uh, we're working in, in fact, I'm getting ready to have a meeting with uh, my good friend from the Hispanic community, sometime this week, we're going to talk uh, in terms of, of voter registration in a nonpartisan way, but we're also going to focus on the fact uh, that some people who are running for office uh, have negative things to say about our Hispanic brothers and sisters in terms of immigration, uh, to demonize them and to uh, make untrue statements, just like they do with the uh, Haitian community. Again, we're not uh, pushing a particular candidate for the NACP, but I think that's something for uh, people of that community to consider as they make their decision as to who they're going to vote for. Let me get to Project 25, yet 2025. You asked me about that. 